Greetings YouTubers. Here are two new toys that I uh, pulled out of Mothballs today. The first thing here is a regulated power supply, uh, early 1960s design. It's an uh, electronic measurement from uh, Eaton, New Jersey, model 212AM. They just call it a transistor power supply. It's a regulated power supply, 0 to 100 volts from 0 to 100 milliampers. And uh, it's comprised of a 5U4 rectifier. Uh, it's got uh, two capacitors and a voltage doubler configuration. It's got an OB2 and an OA2 regulator in the back, an OG3, a 12AX7, a, uh, let's see, shed some light on this here. In the way back, it's got a 6AU6 there and two 6L6 outputs. And as you can imagine, the 6L6s take the brunt of the load. Now when I first pulled this out of storage and fired it up, uh, I would flip the DC switch on, the output switch, and the meter would peg at 100 volts and I was getting a, a completely unregulated 196 volts. I have hooked up to my fluke there just to monitor it. And that was because uh, a 15 kilo ohm 10 watt resistor was open. And I had a 10k and a 5k lying around so I put them in series and I tied them to this lead for a little bit of strain relief so it doesn't bounce around. It uh, doesn't have to be pretty, it's just going to be for shop use. And it uh, does in fact work. And the reason why I got it working was for this cool little bugger up here, which you will see in a moment. And this is a Saldeco FC35 field strength meter. This is what all the technicians would use back in the day when installing uh, antennas for people to uh, point and set on the rotor uh, where the best signal pickup was for what channel and you have your uh, UHF and your VHF dial all your different attenuators and bandwidths your antenna input and uh, you even have a, an audio monitor so you can figure out if you're actually pulling in the thing that you want to pull in and uh, it runs on 18 volts uh, they have four 9 volt batteries which are uh, wired two, each pair wired in uh, parallel and the two pairs in series with each other for 18 volts now rather than brave Walmart or Big Lots on a Sunday when everyone else in the world is there, I figured, well hell, why not fix this thing and uh, hook it up to this and see if we can get this to work because I thought this was just a cool little thing. It has its little carrying case and all the leather straps are in really good shape. And it's just one of those neat pieces of gear that I like have fooling around with. So what we'll do is we'll fire up the power supply, make sure it's stable. And then we'll hook up the field strength meter and I'll show you how it works. So I still have this on the Variac, just because I haven't really proven it's reliable yet. But you turn it on, and the green light comes on. And the red light means that uh, our DC circuit's running. And when everything warms up, I should start to see voltage here, which I do. I already calibrated this, so when it's at zero, after the tubes warm up, we actually get zero. It just it's a fresh on, so we're on about 157 milliampers off uh, off ground. It's got a course adjustment here, which is pretty pretty accurate, and a fine adjustment here. I have this hooked up to a, a dummy load over here, which is just a little power meter, and you can see that deflect ever so slightly when I turn this up and down. And the meter itself uses about 38 milliampers at a full 100 volts. And the most you can get out of this really is about 110 volts, 111. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to disconnect our load. turn my circuit off so I don't short the power supply out and then what I'll do is I'll pull this guy out of the case and we'll uh, <clears throat> let's see they 
have an adapter on the front here. That little plug there. I'm not sure if I want to use that though. Maybe I'll just open the back. Don't want to risk a short circuit. This is a, a fairly old piece of equipment dating from about 1970. It was a very high quality when I opened it up to clean it out and do all the adjustments on it. There's lots of uh, dual op amps and integrated circuits. I imagine that this cost somebody a fair amount of money. You can see here in the batteries, they've got room for four 9 volt batteries. Okay, so what we're going to do. Don't be confused by my color codes. This is, in fact, negative. Hard to hold the camera still and do this at the same time. And let's do a quick check here. Make sure we're not drawing any. Yep. Probably had it hooked up backwards. I think I popped the fuse. Silly me saying. Oh, yeah. We killed that fuse. Okay. Not to fret. I have more. And this time, we'll hook it up the correct way. I feel stupid now. Oh, yeah. Don't mind my color coding. I'm just going to short this thing out. Alright. Uh, so now I'm going to go over here to my vast sea of things. So it happens, I have, here in my hand, 80th amp fuses, which is exactly what this machine wants. So excuse me while I fidget with this for a moment, I'll put the camera down in the parts box. Okay, pull all that back. Insert fuse in the holder. Insert fuse holder into equipment. Come on. Gotta put the camera on again. some odd reason this fuse does not want to cooperate. There we go. All right. So, let us switch the polarity. is on. Yes it is. So now I can come up here and it doesn't kvetch. Good. Now it wants 18 volts. There we go. That's pretty close. Let me do our battery check here. And it says I have 18 volts. So now what we do is we hook up our primitive little antenna, which we just have as a piece of wire here. Just gonna stick into 75 ohm input. And then what we do, we're gonna turn it on VHF, and we have an audio monitor here, which I'm gonna hold down so that you can hear what's going on. We got channel two, channel three. Not going to hear much around here because of all the digital. Channel four, 
channel 5, channel 6, we're going to start hearing FM pretty soon. Now there's no selectivity here since it's just looking for a frequency. So you'll get a little bit of bleed through here. You can go through the FM dial here. Get a pretty good idea of what your signal strength is for various signals. And then we start getting into the higher band UHF like weather. Pretty quiet around here. And then we can switch over to a UHF. Not a whole lot going on until you get around uh, 600 megahertz. You obviously got some digital carrier there. But yeah, there you go. That's a uh, uh, Saldeco uh, FC35 uh, field strength meter being powered by and uh, electronic measurements, 212 AM, uh, vintage tube regulated power supply. So I just thought you might enjoy that cool little video I put together. That's just the weird stuff I've been working on this afternoon. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great weekend.